What's up, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Joseph Fincham, an artist from Long Island, New York, and you're you. In this here video, which I guess you can call the Custom Skate Deck Grand Finale, but how grand it'll be, we'll have to see. I bet you all thought I forgot about this. I said I was going to do it, and I'm doing it. This is the end of the skateboard video. I am not, by any means, a trick skater or one of those skaters who goes out there and I'm a cruiser, boardwalk cruisers, street cruiser. Let's get things straight. I ain't doing no tricks. So getting back into it, we're gonna take a look at everything it took after the painting was done. From painting to final setup. That's what we're looking at today. So I hope you enjoy it. But first, let me say that when I painted the skateboard, I made a complete mess of my studio. So here's a quick clip of me cleaning it up. You don't have to watch it, you can skip ahead. You know, the problem with a tiny studio is that you have to use multiple areas for multiple things. When I paint, I put all my paints that I'm using on the drawing table. When I'm drawing, I close up the easel as much as possible and put a folding table there for anything I might need. Studio is a happy studio. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's take a quick moment here to recap the creation progress, starting from sketching and going to the last of the painting. It was a bunch of live streams, you can always check those out if you want to see exactly how the process unfolded. Clearly, as you can see, I started with the sketching. Sketching, for me, is not the most important part, but it's definitely the foundation. For me, sketching is getting the idea. Um, usually, what comes of my sketches is not what I sketched. Sketching for me allows me to put it on the paper and see what needs improvement. And then I usually re-sketch it with those improvements, which allows to see more improvements. And then I go on to whatever's next. In this case, it's the airbrushing of the color on the background. Very simple, threw it together, painted it black on the top, white on the bottom, and then laid the colors over that to get the gradients of colors that I wanted. Then started on the skull. The skull is my own conception, um, the king skull. Uh, no real reason for it, I just like the idea of the skull with the crown built in to the skull. Um, doesn't mean anything, has no deep significant meaning, I just think it's cool. I'm painting this all on a Cal 7 deck. They aren't the best decks in the world, but they're not the worst either. They have a good shape to them, and it's a good enough wood to have enough pop to it with just enough flex to not snap in half. From the skull we move on to the small flowers, and the small flowers, while all of them are named flowers, some of them are a little iffy on their depiction. It's not that I didn't give it my full effort, it's more along the lines of I put them in there and then forgot what they were later, and then had to paint them 
as what I thought they were. I had them written down, so I knew what flowers they were, and I never referenced my own notes. So, I messed up a bit. It happens. Then we went on to the larger flowers. The larger flowers, in my opinion, are the most detailed and the most prolific in the painting. It's basically the large flowers and the skull, those are the main focuses. So, once that process was done, that's when we get into this video. process of sketching, transferring, painting, that took about two months of live streams, two hours each, about 18 hours total. And again, you can watch those all if you want to. No pressure. say that I was ecstatic to be done with it. It took way too many live streams to get a simple thing like that done. However, I am extremely satisfied with the outcome. I pretty much 100% got on that skateboard what I could see in my head. And that's usually what I'm going for. I'm not always going for photorealism or even s sort of realism. I'm going for what's up here. And that's all there is to it. Again, I really did like the way that this came out. The, all the paint went on very smooth and the colors really pop against the purple and blue background, which is what was planned. I'm not an expert on color theory. I try, but sometimes I get it wrong. I do that. It happens. Now you'll notice here that I flipped the deck upside down, and you may be asking yourself why. For me, on this project, it was all about the angle of attack. It's hard to get your hand in a good position to paint when the surface is very low, so flipping it puts the target area more in my field of view and makes it easier to paint. The drawbacks of this are things like the lighting changing direction and angle, so you have to keep that in mind when you flip things and continue to paint. Sometimes you just flip things to see if they look right. Here I'm going back to the skull to add some final details and to finish off the teeth which I left until last in case I added more flowers or covered up some of the teeth, which I did end up doing with a few random petals and some leaves. So now it's time to get into the biggest and most detailed flowers for the final push to the end while trying to tie it all together.
this is all the stuff that's happened since I finished the painting in the live streams. This is the stuff you didn't get to see. New video coming at ya. So let's move on to the clear coating, the resin portion of this video. This was, of course, my first time trying resin, and I knew mistakes were going to happen. <laughs> Didn't think it would start so soon. Clearly, you can see that I started by not taking the seals off of the bottles before I prepped for this video. And after that, you can see that I started mixing the resin. So much mixing, and mixing, and mixing, and mixing. So much mixing. It's my understanding that you should mix the resin together thoroughly, but slowly, as to not incorporate bubbles into it. So it does take a lot of mixing. And then we're on to the first pour. Resin time, resin time, do, 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 resin time. If you know, you know. first pour went down pretty good. I think everything looked good and I started spreading it out and no matter what I did it didn't want to seem to cover everything. I don't know if it's because I put a light layer of varnish on it to try and protect the sticker which I understand can sort of peel or warp a little if the resin heats up while it's curing it can affect the sticker that's what I've heard so I put a little bit of varnish over it I don't know if the varnish is what caused this problem or if it just wasn't clean enough I did clean it afterwards with uh, denatured alcohol to get any traces of me and dust off of it but it didn't want to stick and I worked it as long as I thought I possibly could it was starting to get a little thick towards the end there, and it just didn't want to set right. Like I said, I don't know if I used too much. Um, it was definitely a lot, and it was dripping off all around it. My understanding that that's supposed to happen. Um, it could also be the fact that this is a skateboard, and there is not one single flat surface on it. Not one not one. Everything has a curve to it, so everything wants to flow differently. So I continued mixing and spreading until I got it to a point where I thought it was good. You can actually see in the video where it is pulling away from the skateboard, I guess. It's, it's beating like a freshly waxed car, and yeah, there was nothing I could do about that. I said it and forget it and hoped it would turn out okay. And to be honest, I'm not really that upset with the outcome. It looks like somebody spilled water on the skateboard and it's like glossy and high in some points and nothing at some other points. It kind of looks really cool. I actually kind of dug it. But I am going to do a second coat over it just to make sure that it covers everywhere. My hope is that it'll fill in the low spots and get trapped in there and spread off of the high spots and kind of even it out overall.
while mixing and mixing and mixing. And then a second pour, and this time instead of using the brush, which I used the first time, I thought that might have had something to do with it. It's been used on other paints, mostly acrylics, but it's been used for other paints and it may have been used for a house at one point. So latex paint, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if it was the brush. Just in case I switch to this sponge, you know, spreader thing. And it did seem to work a little bit better, but I don't know if that's because the resin is being trapped into the low points or if it's because the foam spreader was actually better and didn't leave little streaks and gaps for the resin to move around and do whatever it's gonna do. Either way, second coat went on better, came out smoother with a little bit of sanding. It was pretty much perfect in my opinion. It's actually got a bit of a texture to it because of that first coat and I kind of like it. It makes it a little bit more grippier on the flat edges on the side of the skateboard when you pick it up and you're holding it. It's got a little bit of grip because there are slight ripples in the texture. So now with the resin done and fully cured and the top edge, you know, the, the top side you know the top side of the skateboard sanded to get rid of the resin that dripped and made the little bumps and stuff and getting it back down to normal it's time to start putting it together so first grip tape then trucks some wheels on both sides and that's it it's ready to go Yeah, that was some fancy editing, wasn't it? Okay, gimmick aside, this is what it really took. I started by taking the grip tape and on the paper side, the back side of it, I drew out the pattern that I wanted to make on the skateboard. I then numbered each individual piece so that I knew where they would have to go on the skateboard as I cut it up and then moved on to the next step, which obviously was cutting it up. Um, I took a picture of the entire piece of grip tape before I started cutting it up so that I had that picture as a template to work from once I had all the pieces cut up and scattered all over the place.
I started peeling off the pieces and putting them on. Luckily for me, on only the second piece, I realized I had already screwed up because my template is horizontally flipped from the skateboard. So, in my phone, I flipped the template over, everything's now set, and I started laying out the pieces. They went on excellently. I did not have any real problems putting them on after that first initial rip and pull. And then got everything done in a fairly quick amount of time. I used mob grip tape, which is super grippy. Your grip tape needs may differ. I like a lot of grip, so I can really lean into turns. It makes me feel like I'm not going to just slide right off the board. Some people like it really smooth, which allows you to move your feet more. It's up to you. skate tool or a screwdriver or a wrench, a piece of metal of any kind, you scrape along the edge of the grip tape that weakens it enough so that you come by with your blade and you slice off all those little tabs that hang over the edge, making sure not to cut yourself, of course. Let's all be safe out there. You then use a scrap piece of grip tape that's large enough to smooth off the edge of the grip tape which both softens the edge and knocks it down right to the very edge. And so, here it is. Give you a nice, good look at this. This is the design I went for. Kind of like a checkered sort of offset background, back end, and this weird kind of gapped part in the front. I went through three paint markers doing the silver trim on this. I don't know if it's the clear coat that was originally on the skateboard which I did not cover up or if it was just because of the grip tape being so close to the nib and kind of destroying the nib on the paint marker but I went through three of them very quickly ruining three markers which really annoyed me. Putting on the trucks was pretty much easy once I sat there with a screwdriver and a drill and a couple of other tools I think and I dug the resin out of the holes that 
you know, allow the hardware to pass through the board to attach to the trucks. Yeah, I, I didn't think about that when I was putting the resin on. Forgot completely that they would fill up, and two of them had screws in them that I had to actually unscrew and dig out as well. <clears throat> it was a process. But once I got them dug out, hardware went on easily, trucks went on easily. All that's left now is to bolt on a couple of wheels and lock them down. I chose 55 millimeter wheels by Bones because they are small enough to not be cumbersome while being big enough to cruise along nicely. They're also a little rough on, you know, normal streets, which can be annoying. For comparison, my longboard has 70 millimeter wheels and are smooth like buttered ice. The bearings are also by Bones, they're Bones Reds. They're good, solid bearings. They're not the fastest, but they're good. The back side, of course, got the sticker with my logo on it. Did not move in any way. You can still see some of the texture. There we go. The skull throwing up the flowers. All the way to the bottom. There you go. Ready to ride. It's actually been ridden a few times already, and there's some video for you to see that. Not good video. I am not good on this thing. Um, just cruising around, I'm fine. Changed the incline a little bit, and I look like uh, I've never been on one before. <laughs> so if you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, or the like button, or both. You can do both, it's okay. Make sure you set the notification bell to all, and it'll be good for everyone. Once again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you to my patrons. You guys rock. I completely appreciate you guys for everything you do. If you want to check out the live streams that led up to this, you can check them out here. Or if you want to check out some of my other art videos and see what I'm up to, you can see those here. As always... I'm Joseph Fincham, you are you, and thanks for watching.